People have dreamed of flying for thousands of years. I mean, we're stuck on the ground our entire lives in two dimensions. And to have that ability to leave the ground and fly through the air to be a bird, it's a feeling that can't be described. And not only to do it with an engine or with all this construction around you, but to literally do it with a wing on your back and at running speed just run and jump in the air and take flight. It's really an incredible thing to be able to do. So the cheesy truth of it is that I've always wanted to fly. I've always been one of those people that's just been fascinated by, by aircraft, by spacecraft, by the notion of being able to leave the ground. And not a lot of people get that experience on this scale. Not many people design and build their own plane. Flugtag is a crazy competition where teams build a homemade glider and push it off a platform with a pilot in it to see who can get the furthest. Basically the premise is you build something meant to fly and you push it off a barge 30 feet in the air. These rarely go anywhere and I would think most of it is just an excuse for people to make fools out of themselves in front of tens of thousands of people. Our team is mostly aerospace engineers. I'm actually the only member who's not, but it was a really great experience being a part of this team. It's not every day you can find a group of guys like this who will spend this much of their free time building a plane that's only going to fly for eight seconds. It's a once in a lifetime thing to build something like this. How many people do you know can say they've built an airplane from scratch? Everything in an airplane is pretty simple. It's kind of surprisingly simple when you kind of get down to it and, and you learn a lot about it in aerospace engineering studies. One of the cool things about working here at MIT is you actually get to put that into practice and I guess that comes through in the materials that we use which are very often just construction materials for home building and you know resin, things like that for boat building and they all kind of come together to make an airplane at the end of the day which is it was very cool. We did a lot of designing for the actual shape of it. That's the biggest part aerodynamically. Is you have your shape for your aircraft and your weights, and then that's how you determine how you fly. What we didn't really exactly plan out is how we put all these things together. We knew our main structural components. We knew we were going to use carbon fiber. We knew we were going to have some mylar plastic as our coating, and we knew we had foam. But how did those go together? So one of the big problems with working with carbon fiber is that uh, if you drill it, it loses almost all of its strength. And we had to find ways to create joints with carbon fiber without drilling the carbon fiber. And quite a few iterations bit the dust as we talked through them, but eventually we came up with an idea for aluminum fittings, which is a detail that any mechanical engineer would probably have in seconds, but because we're all really based in the aeronautics realm, we hadn't thought about it quite as hard as we probably should have. This whole thing wouldn't have really been possible with the help of MIT. We have all this room we can build this you know, giant wing and have our cart and kind of mock stuff up indoors. This would have been really challenging if, if we didn't have this space because you know, where would we build this 24 foot long wing? Like my house isn't big enough. But even beyond the you know, physical space, you know, there's so many resources here like professors and technical staff who are always willing to help and you know, say, oh, let me find out the optimal flight path for you guys to fly. So just the ambient knowledge of MIT coming together as we're working really helped us pull off an awesome plane. Well, that's uh, the monkey ballers. We're going to tell you something. If there's a favorite out here today, monkey ballers are in the conversation. I'm here with the entire team, but we're going to start with the man who will be piloting the craft. His name, Alex Feldstein. He is the man dressed as the monkey. So, Alex, first and foremost, how are you feeling here this morning? Oh, we're feeling really good. This is uh, a lot of work that's gone into this plane, and we know we're going to crush it. There is another possibility, and that is you go off the end of the flight deck, directly into the Charles River, in a crash that would thrill the crowd and make Red Bull Flutog the true spectacle that it is. There they go! Control line snapped. We uh, we had everything working on the plane. You know, we had it tested and everything. Uh, 
A few nights before the competition, we realized that the problem in our testing was that our center of gravity was too far aft, so we moved it forward and uh, we didn't redo any of the math on the tail. We just had the same control mechanism on the tail that we did before. I think it's an important engineering lesson too. It doesn't matter if the wings are perfectly designed or your balance is perfect. If you have a weak control point, a weak attachment somewhere, that's the thing that's going to break. In the space race, the Russians were going to beat us to the moon and they only didn't make it because their plane blew up on the launch pad a month before ours. And I'm sure everything else about that rocket would have gone to the moon except for one thing that leaked and it didn't go. And I think engineering, and especially aerospace engineering in general, has a history of catastrophic failure with very, very minor problems. And the break at the end of the day, it you know, it keeps our heads from getting too big. And, and we're MIT, we're gonna keep doing this.